Hi, welcome back to Dr. Sam in this city. I'm here with Dr. Emma having our weekly catch up. Good morning. Good morning. Um, now, today, pigmentation, it's been coming up a lot, both in clinic and on Instagram. And literally, as the sun YouTube. comes out, just yeah, as we speak, coming up. Yeah, so I think what we thought today was that you would explain the different types of pigmentation mm. and why it's so important that you know the nature of your pigmentation before you start trying to tackle it because the nature determines the treatment. Yep. I, I think there's a huge amount of misconception in terms of why people get pigmentation and therefore what you can do about it. And mm. like you were saying, actually, there's no point starting on a treatment regime if you don't actually understand why you get pigmentation. So thinking about, and I was, I was on, a, on my way here, I was thinking about how I'd explain it. And I think there are sort of, broadly speaking, about four categories of pigmentation that most of our patients will fall into. And then there's some weird and wonderfuls that we don't have to worry too much about at the moment. And mm. um, I think the most common one is something that we get as we age. So external factors, so that's UV exposure, sunlight exposure, pollution exposure, and those are sort of the age spots that we tend to associate with sort of older skin. So you can get isolated age spots on your face, on the back of your hands, on your chest, those sorts of things. We see those quite a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And they tend to be quite um, static. So unlike freckles, yeah. which we're gonna come on to, they don't tend to fade and disappear through winter. Exactly, but they do get darker with sun exposure. So how else would you distinguish freckling from sunspots? Because it is something that people mm. want to understand and, and I think it's really important to make that distinction because freckling carries connotations, if you will. Yeah, it does. So freckling is a genetic tendency. So it's a genetic um, trait which shows that you've got a slightly abnormal response to sunlight. So your body isn't producing that smooth sort of pigmentation, that smooth melanin, which is the chemical that we produce to protect ourselves against sunlight. And it shows us that we have to be really careful in the sun and not actually go and try and get a tan. Freckling will start um, early on. So children who freckle will often start at about three or so, and it will gradually get more as they get sort of older in sun exposed sites. So very common to start on the face and then on any other areas that are exposed. So that will happen up to sort of teenage years. And then actually over time, although you will always have the tendency to freckle, freckles will often fade um, over time. Mm. So I think it's that really early onset that tells you that you've got a genetic tendency and you'll have it in your family. So you're, you're gonna know about it. Most people don't suddenly just end up with freckles with no one else around that has them. So you, you understand that that's the nature of your skin. Um, I'm freckly and I would say don't waste huge amounts of money trying to you know, lighten them, trying to go and have all sorts of procedures because actually there's not that much that changes it. And I'm short of like living your life in a closed box, actually you just need to embrace that. But you need to be super careful about the sun. I think that's right. People do have a love-hate relationship with their freckles, I think. You know, people love, love. really quite love them. Yes. Yeah. Others, you know, are trying to get rid of them. And as you say, it's an uphill battle. I strongly believe if that's how you're born, embrace it. Embrace it. We're not very Definitely. good at treating things where there's a strong genetic yeah. drive for something to persist. So just come to terms. Come to terms with it, but just know that you have to be more careful than your non-freckled friends in the sun. Yeah, so I think that's sunspots, age spots, liver spots covered, freckling covered. What else? Let's talk about melasma. Melasma, yeah. really common. So that's what we know as the, the mask of pregnancy. It's the pigmentation that you often get around your cheeks, around your upper lip, forehead. Um, it definitely gets worse in the sun, but it can be there sort of all year round, but it definitely fades when you're out of the sun. And that's got quite a strong hormonal link. So if you're on the oral contraceptive pill or you're pregnant, you're much more likely to get that. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think the characteristics are curved edges. It's a really peculiar condition. People think it often relates on the cheekbones to wearing sunglasses, but it does not. It follows the line of the orbit. I think it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Curved um, edges, um, and again, top lip, and sometimes along the jawline. Um, but I think that's a real hallmark. It doesn't pass the orbital bone. So if it goes over the edge, it's probably not melasma. So I think we're just looking at little ways that might help you guide yourself to a correct diagnosis so you can know how to go about treating. So I think UV plus hormones, 90% of those with melasma are female. Um, so there's definitely hormones yeah, at huge. play. So that's melasma. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is if you have darker skin and you get some sort of um, irritation within your skin, you may well have pigmentation after that happens. Yeah. So say for example, you've had a burn or you might have had eczema or something like that, your skin will react often by producing a bit more pigmentation. And we call that post-inflammatory, because it's after inflammation or irritation, hyper-extra pigmentation. Um, and that's quite a tricky one as well. Yeah, I think so. And I think the key thing is to recognize that it's the inflammation 
that drives the pigmentation, so therefore the pigmentation will follow the pattern of the inflammation. If you've got eczema around your eyes, you get darker around your eyes. Mm -hmm. If you've got spots or acne in your lower face, that's where you'll have the pigmentation. Um, and I think you're right, in darker skin types, it can cause as much distress as the inflammatory process yeah. itself. Um, and it can take blooming ages, especially if you've ages. had a lot of inflammation. If you've had ages. those stubborn nodules of acne, yeah. you can almost expect the, the marks to you know, take double the length of time to clear up. Yeah, definitely. Should we just give a quick summary, the highlights of what we just said? So we've talked about the sort of age-related pigmentation, sunspots. Yep, so that's largely lifestyle-driven. We've talked about freckling. And that's genetic um, and something to recognise more as a marker of extra care being needed for sun protection. We've talked about melasma. Which is a mixture of hormones, um, which is genetic largely, and external factors like UV. Um, and it needs perhaps a more complete approach, which we'll come to in our next video on pigmentation. And last but not least, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Yeah, which is relating to something else like acne, eczema or irritation that's gone before that leaves dark marks on the skin. So there is, you know all about pigmentation now. Hope that was helpful. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.